What's up, everybody? It is Patrick here. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I can't believe you came back for the second part of this video because let me tell you, there were some people who sent me some emails about the first part that um they did not take too kindly to what I had to say, but that's okay because guess what? Everything I had to say was right out of the Bible. And if we're going to live a biblical life, we have to know what is in God's Word. And if you don't like what's in God's Word... Um, I'm going to put it this way, that's too bad, because it doesn't change. God's Word is unchanging. We should be the ones changing to fit what God wants for us, not the other way around. Let me mute my computer here. Not the other way around. And here's the thing. Today, if you didn't like the first part of this little series of the church needs to get back to the Bible, you're probably not going to like this episode either. You're probably going to watch it just to see how you can email me and complain again. Once again, I got no problem with that. I have no problem having a civil discussion with anyone who wants to talk about the Bible. But notice what I said, a civil discussion. I do not get into internet fights with people because everything I'm saying is straight from God's Word. And that's what we're going to look at today because we're going to continue this idea of why is the church going off and doing things that are against what God says we're supposed to be doing? And notice I use the word church there. That's the big C church, the general overall idea of the body of Christ are going off and doing these things. Now, we started this um, discussion by looking at a CBS.com article about the, the, the decline of um, congregants in the United Methodist Church. And I said I did not want it to be a United Methodist Church bashing session, and that's not what it was. I said because all of the issues that were discussed in that article go across all denominations. And it really concentrated on the um, gay marriage and LGBTQ ordination of bishops in the article. And I think that is a, um, a an issue that is dealt with all the time here, in, in particularly in America, maybe not other places, but I am in America, so in, a, in America. But there was another part to the article that really jumped out at me, and I said, well, this is the more overriding issue, I think, that I have with um, what's going on than necessarily the um, letting someone who's in an habitual sin be in a position of leadership. And this is an issue that actually um, the Southern Baptist Conference had to deal with uh, tremendously a few months back. And what the issue is, is when you first start reading the article, it says, Bishop Karen Elevetto. Okay, the issue is, how is a woman in leadership? I mean, once again, here comes all the hate mail from the feminazis. But I am not saying this out of a position of a hate for women, trust me. Right? I am saying this out of a position of it's clear in the Bible that women are not supposed to be pastors. Now, I've just sent half of you over the edge by making that statement. I'm well aware of that. But guess what? I go by what God's Word says. And here is the thing. And I mentioned this in um, in in the other video. My dad is a pastor, pastors two churches, and guess what? His wife is also a pastor. And I say his wife because my mom has passed away, and he remarried. And we're all I'm fifty, and they're you know in their seventies. So I'm not going to say stepmom. Okay, it's his wife, his new wife. She is a pastor. And I have had this discussion many times with them in private about this topic, because I personally think that the Bible is pretty clear on this topic. And when I remember the title of the series is The Church Needs to Get Back to the Bible. So why is it that all of a sudden, the church is now allowing this to happen when it's clearly against what God words, God's Word says. Now, you're going to say, where does it say that women can't be pastors? Okay, the Bible does not come out and say women can't be pastors. There is no passage you're going to 
find that says those exact words. Okay? But it's back to the argument that I made in the last um, video where the LGBTQ community, their big linchpin argument is Jesus never says homosexuality is a sin. That's what their big linchpin article is. And I kind of went through and said, he doesn't have to say it directly because the text certainly interprets that. And I went through and explained that. The text 100% makes it clear that women are not to be pastors. 100%. And you're saying, well, where does it say this? Okay, let's start with the basic one, okay? Let's start with the basic one. In 1 Corinthians, we know that it says the man is to be the spiritual head of the household. God is the leader, right? God is the, if you're looking at it as an umbrella, God is the leader, the overall head, with man being the human head, let's put it that way, of the household, and women being under man when it comes to the spiritual nature, the spiritual guidance, the spiritual leading of a household. That is straight biblical, okay? And there are many people that have an issue with that. I get that, okay? But once again, I'm not concerned with what your issue is, because I only go by what the Bible says, and that is straight from the Bible. So we're starting from that premise that in your own individual household, that Man is the spiritual leader, God is overseeing man, and then the male of the household, in other words, the husband, is to guide the household in the ways of God. Now, if it's that way in a microcosm household, why would it be any different in the church? Why would all of a sudden God say, oh, when you're leading your household individually, you're the spiritual leader. But don't worry, when you get to my house, i.e. the church, it's going to be different. That makes absolutely no sense why it would be that, okay? So that's the first biblical basis for this. But we're not in the church when we're talking about that, right? You're saying, well, you're making an assumption that God doesn't want it that way. Okay, let's, once again, you have to be willing to accept the premise that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. It is inspired by God, and God led men to write it in their own style. But it is the words of God. Because if you're not willing to start from that premise, then everything else I'm about to say, you're going to throw away. Because you're going to say, oh, that's just one person's opinion. If you're not willing to do that, and trust me, there are, I've talked about this on the other show, there are people in seminary right now, in seminaries teaching that that's not the case. It is the case, okay? So you have to start from that premise. So, starting from that premise, let's look at some scripture to back this up. And you all know the two I'm going to go to because it's the two that it really solidify the point. And the first one we're going to be in is 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse number 11. A woman must quietly receive instructions with entire submissiveness. Oh, I can hear hear the keyboards clicking now, right? Oh, there you go. Women are submissive to men. Well, yeah, in the role of a spiritual guidance, absolutely. Okay? But I I do not, and and it says I here, Paul is writing, remember, to Timothy to give him instructions on how the church should be run. Keep that in mind. That is what is going on here. But I do not allow women to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. Note, look at what it says. I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. There is not one thing, and and, and this is one of the things that people will do, will then swing to the complete other side of this argument, okay? It doesn't say women can't have leadership roles in the church with other women. 
It doesn't say that women just have to sit there and do nothing in a church. There are defined roles for women and men in a church. And Paul says here, look at what he says. I don't allow them to teach or have authority over a man. They absolutely can lead other women. And I love it when I'm on Facebook and scrolling through and I see things like the Adore Women's Conference that just occurred at a church here in my, in my town. Or the Her Conference is another big one that occurs at some of the churches in my town. I think that's great because that's biblically how it's supposed to be. And Paul makes that clear. Let's go on. Um, uh, verse, thir- b- verse 13, for it was Adam who was first created, then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a wrongdoer. Doesn't mean Adam is off the hook, okay? That's not a passage to say Adam was off the hook, okay? But the woman will be her, be preserved through childbirth if they continue with faith, love, sanctity, with moderation. Okay, now you say, well, that doesn't really say women can't be pastors. I think just that verb, that 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 one part. I think eleven, I mean, uh, twelve clearly says it. Okay, First Timothy two twelve clearly makes the case. But if you're going to say that, then let's go on, shall we? And let's actually look at what Paul says are the qualifications for a pastor. Okay, and this is where you have to understand the Greek a little bit. Okay. Because the word pastor is not used here. And no matter what translation you use, it's going to have one of two words. It's going to either say overseer, or it's going to say elder. Okay? It's going to have one of those two words. And those words mean a shepherd of the flock. And guess what? So does the word for pastor. So when you see elder, overseer, pastor, it's talking about shepherding people. And it's the same word that's used interchangeably, because when you get over to Titus, which we're going to go to here in a minute, they use, it's a different translation, but it's the same word. It's the same concept that's used. So, let's read. Well, you say, well, it doesn't say women can't be pastors. Let's read what Paul says are the qualifications for that position. It is a trustworthy statement. In other words, it is true. It is, this is what the authority is. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, and yes, that is the correct pronoun in there. We're going to play the pronoun game now. That is the correct pronoun in there. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, It is a fine work that he desires. Who desires? He desires to do. An overseer, a pastor, an elder, remember, the words are interchangeable, then must be above repost, the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband, the husband of one wife. This is pretty clear stuff once you look at it, okay? And I can already see the the emails now. Well, that means if you're 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 divorced, um, you can't be a pastor. Okay, that's open to interpretation, and here's the reason why I say that. Okay, and I'm just going to go down this a little bit. Okay, depends on when the divorce happened. If the person was married and divorced before they came to know the Lord, then no, that's not the case. Because what you're doing is, when you do that, is you are holding someone to a biblical standard before they knew the Bible. But if the person was married and divorced after they know the Lord, then absolutely 100% that is the case. If the person gets divorced while they are pastoring, while they are shepherding, while they are in an elder overseer position, Yes, they should step down. See, it swings both ways when you look at these these passages. It absolutely swings both ways. But once again, it is the husband of one wife. It is the male pronoun here. 
temperament, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, skillful in teaching, not overindulging in wine, not a bully, but gentle, okay? He, he, he must be the one who manages his own household well, who manages his children and keeps them under control with dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? Are you picking up the pronoun that's being used here over and over and over and over again? And if you say, well, that's just one letter, that's just Paul telling one person, let's go to Titus. For this reason, I left you in Crete that you would set in order the remains and appoint elders. Remember, elders, overseers, pastors, the same idea, the same concept, the shepherding of the flock in every city. As I directed you, namely, if any man, if what? Any man is above reproach, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of indecent behavior or rebellion, for the overseer must be beyond reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, crim tipper, not indulgent in wine, not a boy, not a greedy, but hospitable, loving, what, what is good, self-controlled, holy, holding faithful and firmly to the word, which is in accordance with the teaching that he, he will be able to exhort both in sound doctrine and refute to those who contradict it. Yes, nowhere in the Bible does it say women can't be pastors. Those words don't exist. But guess what? They certainly exist in these passages. They certainly exist in 1 Corinthians 11 where it talks about the man being the spiritual head of the household. They certainly exist in those places. So, you're saying, well, are you saying women can't be used for God? That's not what I'm saying at all. And don't try to put words in my mouth, because I can already see the emails coming. God, if you've ever read the wonderful book, Twelve um, Ordinary Women by John MacArthur, it is a great example of women throughout the Bible being used for God. You're looking at people like Rahab and people like Ruth. Ruth is an amazing example of a woman being used by God, right? You're looking at people like Lydia, looking at people like Judith. All incredible women for God, but guess what they never were? They never were shepherds of the church. They never were in charge or in an authority leadership role over men. Never do you read about that in the Bible. Can they be teachers? Absolutely. But they're not leaders. They're not in authority positions over men. So when you go back to what started this whole thing for me, which was the article where it said, Bishop Karen Oliveto, it's not the fact that it's a gay bishop. That's the overriding problem. The overriding problem is the church completely ignored what the rules what, that are laid out by God's word for that position is. She should have never been in the position to begin with because that position is clearly designed for a man. And that is not me. That is. God's word. And see, here's the thing we have to remember. Just because society says you can't do that, just because society says you can't say it's only for a man, doesn't change what God's word says. God's word never, ever changes no matter what society wants you to believe. And society says there are clear roles for women in the church. What are they to do? They are to bring up the other women in the church. They have an women, ladies, you have a very important role in helping shepherd the other women in the church, helping shepherd those who are widowed, who are orphaned. All of that is laid out in the Bible as well overseeing the home, making sure your children 
under the authority of your husband, under the spiritual authority. And that's the key word we have to add to this, okay? Because men, alpha males in particular, you've got to back off the I'm the authority. No, it's the spiritual authority, the decision-making authority for what is good for the household in terms of their relationship with God. That's where the submissiveness comes in. And guess what? That's a burden for you. I say you because I'm not married, but that's a burden for the man. But women, you are to be there to help support those decisions. And the same thing in the church. You're to be there to help support those that are coming along. Support the young ladies that come into your church, if you're an older lady. But you're not to be a pastor. You're not to be in a position of authority over men. And if that is harsh, if you don't like how that sounds, I'm sorry. But guess what? It's not me saying it. It's God saying it. And that's how the church needs to get back to the Bible. Tomorrow we're going to pick up our study of John. So please, if you haven't already done so, you can head to that playlist that we have here on the page and you can kind of get caught up where we are. We're going to pick it up in the middle of John chapter 7 tomorrow. And until then, everybody, let's start living biblically like we're supposed to. This has been Patrick. PatrickRyanLewis.com is where you can find all the information about me, including that Amazon wish list and the Olive Tree wish list. Don't forget about the Olive Tree wish list because they have a lot of commentaries that are actually on sale right now if you feel like helping contribute to the show and helping with our research library. You could do so through there, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.